Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be checking out the Radiolink RC8X. Now this is going to be a bit of a different unboxing because, well, I've already unboxed it. When I first got the radio, I was excited to get it out. I was excited to get the included LiPo on the charger so that I had a fully charged battery in it. And I pretty much skipped over that whole unboxing experience. So what we're going to do in this video is, is again, things are going to be a little different. I'm going to show you how I've got everything packed in there. So this bag that you see here right now, guys, is included. It comes with the radio, and it's a nice size bag because you can see right here right now the radio is about this big, takes up all this room, but it leaves quite a bit of room for other things. So you can kind of put like your GoPro, your tools, all that kind of fun stuff in there. We're going to go over that. So it's going to be kind of a sort of a setup video or showing you guys my setup when I go out. I'm going to go over some of the things on the radio, like the themes and all that kind of fun stuff. As well as, guys, if you did watch my RC6GS version 3 video, a lot of the cool features that that radio does, the RC8X does as well, but just with a lot finer control and in a much nicer form factor. That's going to be the biggest thing. Now, I've also, which kind of makes this unboxing cool, is that I've already used the radio. So I've been running it with my Kagama as well as with my Arma Mojave 4S. So besides from just, you know, getting out, showing you guys the radio, I can actually talk about it and how it feels in the hand and how it was when I was running it. But either way, let's get that radio out. Now, when you buy the radio, guys, this is how it comes. So it comes in like a cardboard box. Inside the cardboard box, you have this bag and everything is in this bag. So there's going to be links, guys, in the description to the Amazon website. You can check out the .com and the .ca. That's where you can pick this radio up. But you get it out of the box, you have your zipper, and now this is what I was talking about when I was referring to sort of like my setup. So when I go out, this is what I've kind of got with me. I always have a 17 millimeter wheel wrench just because, hey, it's always nice to be able to check your wheel nuts and make sure they're tight. I can put my GoPro in here, my spare battery, as well as just like a general tool, a bunch of different sizes, all that kind of fun stuff. So if there's something I just need to quickly tune, I can. And what's nice is that's all in here as well as it's all separated from the radio itself. A lot of times in the past, pouches I've used and stuff like that, I've got the radio sitting in it. So I kind of shove the radio up and the GoPro is kind of flopping around and tools are flopping around. So that's really nice. As well as, guys, you also have this kind of zipper compartment right here. And it's pretty big as well, guys. I put my strap in there. So again, it's just nice that even, even though, guys, this unboxing is about the radio, I'm just kind of showing you that even with the way it comes and the fact that you get this pouch with it you can kind of use this thing as well and keep using it now when you remove your little top tray you get into the radio now if you've never seen one of these radios before then you were pretty much like me a few weeks ago because i didn't know much about these and i started seeing them come up in other people's videos and i was seeing other rcers and youtubers using it and i thought you know what i've got to check this thing out press down on the power button hold it for a couple of seconds you probably saw a quick little glimpse of my avatar there that was kind of my wallpaper i set this up using red and black now i'm going to show you what i mean by that hopefully i won't get much glare in this but if you go in here and you go into theme setting you can see here blue orange green and purple now it kind of comes default in this blue theme which does look good i had this one on for a bit i had then gone into this black one i thought it looked kind of cool I just thought I like the two colors. It's kind of got a sort of a bit of a tealish to the black, but I prefer, I made my own. I just like the red and black because it sort of matches my Kagama body. And I thought that looked really neat as well as, and I'm going to, I got to turn the lights off. So hopefully this will work for us. These lights right here light up. Now they do look very orange. However, you can see in the dark, I'm not going to move it too fast it kind of matches those side lights. So even though they look very orange when, well, when you've got the lights on, I was, when I originally was setting this up, I was sitting upstairs in the living room, the lights were kind of dim and I went with the red and black and I just thought it looked really, really cool. I liked the way it looked like they matched. So what I mean by that, and I'm going to do this in the dark is if we go here and we go back to theme, keep hitting a language. I don't know. I always like things to kind of match. So personally, I I like the idea of just using that red and black. 
And again, so that guy's it. Again, that's all stuff that you can customize. So when you're in here and you go back into theme, you can change any custom you want. You can change the, the main red or this background black right here. So it's all up to you what you want to do. Now, I realized when I was doing that that I should have just let the screen dim. So again, guys, this is going to be a bit of a different unboxing. We're not going to go into every hardcore specific feature of the radio. I'm going to be showing you guys the things that I set up on the radio when I initially kind of got it out of the box and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, the one thing, guys, I set up originally right away, like it was one of the first after I did this theme, was I knew I wanted the screen to dim. I had seen it already happen, and I wanted it to happen fairly soon after starting the actual radio up. So usually when I get out, I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to you know, plug in my battery, turn on the ESC, and I'm going to start running. If there's anything I want to change, like the model and stuff, I usually do that right away. So what you do is if you go into settings, you choose backlight. And when you choose backlight, there's a couple of options here. One, you have a switch. So right now, if we tap that switch, that's my PS3 switch, you can see it just dims right down. So if my maybe the transmitter battery was getting down or I was going out and running a ton of cars or I was going out on a long trail run or something like that, I could just turn that off and not even worry about the radio dimming on its own. However, this right here, this decrease at 30%, and then right here, this is the time. So it's telling you right now that at, hopefully I'm not getting any glare there, at 25 seconds, the screen's going to dim down to 30%. I like that. That's how I set mine up. I think I originally I had it really quick at like five or ten seconds, but then it was just kind of driving me nuts. And I do knew doing this video would be even more annoying. So that's why I've still got it at 25 seconds. Once I start running the video again and I'm not worried about doing a video like this, I'll probably lower that value. Now I just realized that I had forgot to go over what was included with the radio, like what comes in the box. Probably because I didn't do like the usual unboxing where we take everything out. I kind of had skipped over everything. So I thought I would just take a quick minute to go over what's included. Now, the nice thing with the RC8X is it does include two receivers. So you have this little guy here. It's a four channel receiver up to a 400 meter range. Now I've been running this little guy in my Mojave 4S. It's not waterproof or anything, but the one thing that's nice about Arma cars and Traxxas cars and stuff like that is they do have a sealed radio box. So I just have a little piece of double sided tape in there, stuck it in and we're good to go. I've had zero issues with that. But the nice thing with this radio is it comes with this monster. This is an eight channel up to 600 meter range and is also splash proof as well as guys it has built in telemetry. So if you did just watch my RC6GS video, a lot of this is going to be the same and I'm not going to touch on every little detail with the radio in general because I pretty much just did it with that. But yes, this does come with built in telemetry. Now, I often think of those things as kind of gimmicks why do i really need to know that set up your lvc and you're good to go except i'm out right now well not literally out right now but i've been out running my mojave 4s with a older hobby wing esc and i've been running 5s in it now to get 5s on that esc you have to disable the low voltage control so what i did was this weekend when i was out with it I had forgot to bring my little lipo checker with me and my lipo alarm. So I pretty much ran it. I think I, you know, about 11 or 12 minutes in, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm probably good for a few more minutes, but I don't want to risk it. So I shut it down. Now, what would have been nice is if I had been running this this weekend, I would be getting real time indication on my radio of the voltage of the battery. So I would have been able to see it going down. I could have gave myself an idea of, let's say, uh, what is that? That's three, six, nine, 12, 15. So 15 volts at three volts per cell. We wouldn't risk that, but maybe something guys like maybe 16 volts. When I, what, when I saw it drop to maybe 16 volts, I would know, Hey, you know what? I'm going to shut this thing down and I'm not going to use it anymore. That is very nice. And I am going to guys spend the time. I bought JST connectors because I am going to start wiring these things right into my ESCs. I really like being able to have that. And the fact that it's done with a receiver that you can pick up for around 35 bucks Canadian, maybe a little bit less us. That is awesome. You do get, as I just showed you guys, that's the plug for the telemetry, but you can make your own. All you need is a JST connector. You get a lanyard with it as well. This is like a little tool bag. I think it's for adjusting the spring and stuff like that, maybe changing to a different trigger. You also get this. Now, I wouldn't run this. So this is to run eight AAAs in this radio. Now, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this does come with a 1700 milliamp 2S LiPo. 
it can run up to 4S. And it does have, guys, a low voltage control in it as well. It knows it's a light bulb. Usually in receiver or in transmitters, we use life packs. This radio does use a lipo, but it has that low voltage control. Now, if we go in here and we go into battery, you can see here right now, you can see my current is 7.7 .7 volts. You have a minimum of 6 volts, maximum of 8.4. So for those that don't know, lipos, they range from 3 volts up to 4.2. So obviously 3 is the minimum 6 volts, maximum is the 8.4. Now, I've got it set up, and I think this was default. The alarm goes off at 6.8 volts. So that's around 3.4 volts per cell. Now what you have to understand is that cells don't equally drop. You're always going to have a slightly different voltage in each cell type thing. That's the same for your cars and you're running your 3S, 4S, 6S packs and stuff like that. So it's set up right now at 6.8. I'll probably leave it that way. I have no problem, you know, charging up this transmitter every once in a while to make sure that it's charged and good to go. So again, you can adjust all this stuff and obviously if you were running something like a 3s or a 4s pack you would get all those indications as well now the one thing i forgot to mention guys earlier when i was talking about the receivers was that both of these have built-in gyros so for your steering and all that kind of fun stuff i have it set up on my radio right here so this was my push button switch which does my display it does the dimming but then this right here is my gyro so if i want to turn up the gain or if i want to turn it back I do with that switch so again guys that's like a dual switch it's a button and a dial now what i want to do is sort of go over the form factor the actual appearance and the way this radio feels you have to remember that radio link for the longest time is kind of a budget company they've made a very good product a very quality product a lot of people know it a lot of people believe in it but the form factor itself of something like for example the rc6gs is a little bit dated this on the other hand guys feels great and looks great you have a 4.3 inch lcd screen at the top it's obviously all touch screen you have switches and buttons and dials everywhere i am not sure if i mentioned it already guys but you can reverse the wheel so you can actually move this whole assembly over to this side and then bring this back over here so if you're left-handed they didn't forget about you you have a few ports on this thing you've got a USB C right here you got a headphone jack here your micro sd card is up here in the front these switches on this side guys right here are for when you've actually reversed the steering wheel so these aren't like extra buttons or anything like that they're the same as these ones right here this is where your lanyard would go and unlike some of their other radios where it's mostly plastic you have kind of a rubber feel here it's not super tacky or anything like that but it definitely adds good comfort to the radio it's not a very heavy radio at all i don't find it to be um, like tippy or anything like that. I think if you were using that, this, um, that if you were using those triple A's, it would probably add a little bit more weight. It would probably add in the st stability of the radio, but you can kind of see there it was a little bit floppy. But overall, guys, I mean, again, it's very light in the hand. This is for your lanyard. So if you are somebody who's kind of worried about possibly tipping over your radio and stuff like that, you know what? Attach the lanyard. And even if you don't put it around your neck, even if you just kind of wrap it around your wrist sort of thing, like you put the strap in and then have it on here, if you do drop it, it's going to grab that first. I have often done that with things, and it, it has saved my butt a few times. When it comes to the menu, guys, of the radio, that is where we could spend a lot of time. There is a lot of features, a lot of functions. You can tweak and tune everything. And I don't want this video to go on and on and on because if you're like me, you'll get bored and I don't want that to happen. So basically, guys, you can do a lot. All right. So there you have it. The Radio Link RC8X. Now, I know I didn't get into a lot of the details, a lot of the features, all that kind of stuff. You go in here, guys, you can see you have menus for days. You can customize everything. There's features out the wazoo. And we're going to get to that. At times that we go to use one of those features on one of the cars, I'll probably start the video dialing into that feature, setting it up and all that kind of fun stuff. But for this video, guys, I just, it would have gone on for hours and hours and hours, and I didn't want to do that. I do want to sum up this video one way, though. When I initially started getting into Radio Link, I mentioned it before, this was the radio I was going after, but they sent me this one first. Now, I've used this one now for about three, three weeks, two and a half to three weeks. But I have ran it a lot. And the same goes now for the RC8X as well, guys. I've gone out a lot of nights 
come home from work. I don't go with the GoPro. It's already starting to get dark. And I just grab a car and I rip up to the top of the street and I run it around because I really wanted to put in some time with these radios, especially before I did the unboxing and this video of the RC8X, because I wanted to sum it up with this, which is for the subscribers that know me and who have been watching my videos for years and you know how I, I comment and I, I give it to you straight. I have had zero issues with the radios or the receivers. And the reason I'm putting so much emphasis in that, guys, is that I am somebody who has been in this hobby now for over 30 years. I've ran Futaba for most of them. I've had a lot of Spectrum stuff, especially when Horizon got into it. And they, obviously, you guys, they include the Spectrum receivers in a lot of their cars, or all their cars. Moving on to another radio was not easy. The reason I'd gotten rid of my Futaba was I would just gotten tired of the cost of the receivers and all that kind of stuff. Having to add modules for telemetry and all that kind of stuff was just getting way too expensive. It wasn't making any sense. So when I saw this radio and I saw people using it, it grabbed my attention. It looked nice. It looked very high quality. Even though I was not all that familiar with Radio Link at the time, I wanted to give them a try. So again, like I mentioned, guys, I wrote them for the RC8X. We started off with the RC6GS, which is a good thing because I got to use their $100 radio use their receivers and be like, oh, there's no issues here at all. I'm not having range issues. I'm not having glitching issues or any of that stuff. The receivers that come with the radio. So these two here, guys, like I mentioned, do come with the RC8X. If I get a new car, so tomorrow, let's say I get a Big Rock 6S and I want to throw a receiver in it because obviously I'm going to want to use my new radios. I can pick up one of these on Amazon for somewhere around 30 to 35 bucks. Now this is the eight channel one, there's also the seven channel one, but that isn't a lot of money and I can get it right off Amazon. And before anybody says, oh, you've got to go support your local hobby store and all that stuff. I don't have a local hobby store. So everything that I buy, I have to buy online and get it shipped. So the ability to just go on Amazon, order a receiver and be good to go. For me guys, that's exciting. That makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, that is it, though. I've mentioned a lot of the things. We've gone over some of the features. Again, guys, there are menus for days. There are features out the wazoo, and we're going to be using them, so definitely stay tuned. But, guys, as always, if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe, and have a great day.